Hi everyone, welcome to Contact Vision Talks. A few years ago, I was offered the opportunity to speak at a university about the orchestra as a metaphor for explaining organizational structure. It was the first time somebody took on my ideas on interdisciplinary values and education. Today, I am delighted to welcome my good friend, Dr. Joseph Drew, professor at the Maryland University College and editor-in-chief of the Comparative Civilizations Review. I reached out to him to talk about interdisciplinary values in education and explain to us the multiple benefits of engaging in this exciting discipline. Joe, you have been one of my first supporters and believers in using the metaphor of music to explain organizational structures and business processes. In your opinion, why is interdisciplinary education important? Well, uh, thank you for answer, asking that question. Uh, number one, I think that I would say that all learning in the Western world since the 13th century has been divided into sciences and arts. Arts, which generate, are based on creativity, and sciences, which are based on a method which has brought us tremendous mm, advance. I think that interdisciplinary education means both scientific and educational and uh, uh, and art orientations and one frees uh, one encourages the other they have a symbiotic relationship second i think that it's incumbent upon us to be what what they used to call renaissance men that is to say that one of the dangers in contemporary society is we get to be siloed in our professions, in our reading, in our knowledge, sets of knowledge that we use. This is very bad. The, there is uh, benefits that come from cross-fertilization. And third, your own independent creation of your personality depends upon being a Renaissance person. That is to say, you need a broad base of knowledge in our increasingly uh, connected world. It's very important. Uh, perhaps I am guided here by the fact that since the 1980s, I've been an officer of the International Society for the Comparative Study of Civilizations. But I think it's extremely important for us to be broadly educated. There's a tremendous danger in uh, American society and other Western societies for young people to want to specialize very quickly in their field. Oh, don't take that course. It's not a requisite to get your degree in engineering. Well, that may be so, but as a human being, it's very important to have a broadly based, uh, well-grounded education, particularly in what we would call in the United States the first several years of college. That means you have to know music. You have to know art. You have to know history. You have to know every aspect of a culture and every aspect of man's historical accretion of learning in order to begin to be uh, able to understand, to absorb, and contribute to broad uh, knowledge that we have in the world. Uh, an individual who hasn't had training, for example, in music, is not going to be very good at mathematics or science and won't understand the meaning of math or science. They have to be placed in context, and that context means we have to be broadly educated. Finally, to understand other people in the world, other civilizations, other cultures, we have to have an interdisciplinary education. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. In some societies, for example, India, mm -hmm. there's a great emphasis on uh, the aesthetics of dance or the aesthetics of music that's quite different from, let's say, the civilization of China or, let's say, the Western world or, let's say, Ethiopian civilization, etc. So if we're going to be contributing to the advancement of mankind, we've got to know something about the history, values, and culture of the of, of many uh, societies within which uh, we're living now. 
so if um, somebody would now approach you and ask, um, how can I start, where shall I start um, my interdisciplinary education? What would you advise? Well, one way is to do it backwards. Make up a list of uh, those uh, subjects, those uh, works of literature, for example, that you want to be familiar with by the time you die and work it backwards. Um, I would recommend that uh, people start with a broad general introduction to world history and world culture. I would say language is extremely important. I would say the study of the mechanics of music, the history of music, I would say art and architecture. After all, if you're living in the Western world, if you don't understand the logic that went into Greek architecture, you're not going to understand the philosophy that followed uh, thereafter. I think you need to understand uh, literature, world literature, great literature which speaks to humanity regardless of the era it was written in or the language it was written in. So I would uh, expose myself to uh, great uh, works of, of literature and drama from all the major cultures. That would be a beginning point. And um, how do you see music? Um, you mentioned already the inspiration, for example, how a dance, um, also theater, how they, um, the knowledge can explain um, a lot about a culture, about a certain country. And for example, I remember I, uh, one of, when you invited me for a lecture, uh, to the university then in Prague, uh, I spoke about actually the orchestra. Um, how do you see, for example, the orchestra as a good example um, for a business organization? You know, I don't know too, I don't, I don't know necessarily too well the history of music, but I think with the emerging of the Baroque period, and the development of many uh, types of instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, it brought to Western music quite a, um, a switch from the monotonal kind of music uh, of, uh, of the Renaissance, let's say. And the, the complexity contributed to the beauty, but it took a conductor and it took a writer to put the music of the various contributing voices together in order to create a harmony or a beautiful uh, sound. And I think um, that is instructive for how good businesses are run as well. It, to be able to manage these competing yet harmonious sounds has a parallel and to be able and how to manage the complexities of a modern um, organization. True. Um, as a professor, um, when you approach your students with the subject of interdisciplinary value, what challenges do you face? What questions do they ask? Are they receptive to the idea or not? And why? Yes. And why not? So I teach mostly political science and sociology. <laughs> if you're going to understand the motivation of China, you've got to know the history of China. You've got to know the values of, of the Chinese uh, people. You've got to under, try to understand their, their music, how they rationally put together the complexities of this world into a coherent value pattern. Mm -hmm. Once you understand that, you can see that why they're uh, maintaining a position that they are. Um, music is very complicated. But music opens for us not only the world, the realms of beauty, but the different types of appreciation of, 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 of beauty that we can have. And that should be, well, you know, the great French philosopher Teilhard de Chardin talked about mm -hmm. the noosphere, which operates above the level of mankind. And up there in the noosphere, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, if you're young or old, if you're black or white, if you're English speaker. None of those things matter. Mm -hmm. It's just the accumulated best thinking of mankind. This is what Plato tried to teach us that education is for, so that we can understand these, what he called forms, that uh, dominate actuality in the world. And I think music, and the way music is put together, is important for students to understand 
the rationality of each individual society and the harmonies of each individual society. If you hear Ravi Shankar play to a Western ear that is not exposed to Indian music, it'll seem like tuning up, when actually it's bringing to us an understanding of the subtleties that exist in Indian culture that don't exist in uh, Western culture, just for an example. Uh, that's true. So the, the music is the identity um, of a culture and explains to us in the best way. Um, that's that's um, uh, can be inspiring also to um, for for students to search like if they like the music to go further and um, understand explore the culture of, of a of a country. Um, if you want to understand the American culture, for example, go to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. I think that's our greatest song. In the beauties of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigured you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free as God is marching on. In other words, we American people exist to bring freedom to mankind. We may make mistakes and do it wrong, but our motivation is for all people to be freed. That's why we exist as a country. And as and a song actually best uh, expresses um, the philosophy, the feelings, the belief of, 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 um, of the existence of a country, its tradition, its culture. Um, today, like, um, do you think we are, or our society is open to interdisciplinary? And where do you see are the, are the biggest um, maybe barriers to it? Not open to, it's critical for our society to have interdisciplinary mm -hmm. education. It's essential. Um, a guy named Hall mm -hmm. wrote a book called The Silent Language. Mm -hmm. All our cultures carry with us certain behavior patterns. And as we live our lives, we're going to be dealing with people, particularly in complex multicultural societies like the United States, we're going to be dealing with people um, who have behavior patterns that are going to appear peculiar to us. We mm -hmm. have to struggle to understand what a certain a way of speaking to somebody means. How do we address somebody? Uh, I'm in Israel all the time. How do we address somebody from the Arab world in a respectful way? Mm -hmm. How do we show appreciation for their culture? What mistakes can we make if we dress wrong? Or if this culture doesn't have the same time sensitivities of that culture? Mm -hmm. To understand these things takes broad interdisciplinary education. And we have to bring to our education not just um, one narrow uh, training, but as broad a training. Our lives should be devoted to understanding as much as possible about other cultures, as much as possible about how other people look at the world. And you can take any example in life, from birth to weddings to funerals, and we can see how culture differs, and yet how culture gives meaning to society. And if we want to interact with people from other societies, um, we need to be as, inter as much educated in interdisciplinary way as is possible. And you know, Bibi, I think I made a mistake when I became president of the university in Prague because I did not have as deep an interdisciplinary study of Czech culture as I should have had prior to taking that job because I made, I may have missed cues that people gave me or misinterpreted what they were saying. Even if we're speaking the same language, we can put different meanings on terms and um, therefore offend unnecessarily people. Yeah, of course, of course, that's true. Um, well, you know, like music is usually considered the language that we all understand. And it's a way to bridge um, differences and misunderstandings um, between culture, people's cultures um, and countries. So um, I think that's a good way to um, 
uh, see and explain the value of music and of interdisciplinary value just from that point of view? When I was an undergraduate, uh, we were studying years of uh, Greek and, and Roman uh, and Chinese and so on literature. The way that I got most understanding of my own culture, perhaps, was I joined the chapel choir. And we sang uh, religious, sacred music in uh, uh, of various religions, mostly Episcopalian and Lutheran. But that opened my eyes to the value structure of my fellow Americans who were of different religions from me and, and broadened. That kind of enabled me to understand their points of views and to absorb them as part of my point of views and to see what part of the American culture <clears throat> was my part as well and how to understand my friends and neighbors. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, thank, Joe, thank you very much for sharing uh, your insights into the interdisciplinary value. Um, it was great talking to you. Well, could I just add yes. that the uh, Czech Republic has many uh, beautiful things about it, uh, particularly in the cultural area, but it has nothing that is so impressive to me from my time there as you and your violin uh, music. That was the most beautiful uh, part of living in the Czech Republic. I was first exposed to your music when someone gave me a, a CD where you played a wide variety of pieces of music. And having come from a family of musicians, uh, I immediately was attracted to it. And then as further I heard your music, I, I thought to myself, what a great contribution. And it helped to, in my opinion, as a sociologist, it helped to bring the Czechs, who tend to be an insular nation, a nation surrounded by neighbors that haven't always been so friendly to it over the course of centuries, it helped to broaden the Czech uh, population. And you contributed mightily to the uh, Europeanization of that, of that society. Thank you very much.